Hey there guys, welcome back. I uh, wanted to do an altar tour this uh, this time. It's kind of a bonus video. I haven't decided when these bonus videos are gonna come out, like what the schedule is going to be. I plan on putting out trans videos once a week on Wednesdays, but I don't know what I wanna do with my other content. So who knows when this is coming out and who knows when the second part of it is gonna come out, but I hope you enjoy this. At the very end, I will have a little little display of my altar at night with everything lit up, and it'll look really nice. And uh, yeah, let's let's get into it. I hope you enjoy it. It might be a little long, but I hope you enjoy it. Hey there, guys. It's Hoagie. I thought today I would share with you my altar, and. Uh, the things around it. Kind of a little witchy tour. It's uh, been a hot minute since I did one and I haven't done one on this channel. Uh, if you're interested in seeing my other altar tours, I'll link them below, but they're on my other channel. And I kind of want to move my witchy stuff onto this channel as like a second, a second, you know, topic that I cover, not just trans stuff, but also witchy stuff because it's a big part of my life. So. You know, I, I thought you guys would enjoy this. It's it's a lot more and more organized than it was last time. And I hope you guys like it. Here we go. So starting with the altar, we've got this side, which is dedicated to the deity that I work with. And if you watch my previous altar tour video on my other channel, I kind of explained who Hyperion is. But uh, I want to make a whole video about the whole process of me, you know, realizing that I want a deity, that I need a deity, and like creating him out of my own necessities. And I know a lot of people, well, some people will be like, you can't just make up a god, you can't just do that. And you know what? Yes, I can. I can do whatever I want. It's my practice. It's, it's my thoughts. If I want to bring him into existence, I can do that myself. And I did. So, Hyperion represents the star or stars that came before the Earth and the Sun and the planets. Basically, all of our atoms were created on the inside of a star or stars that exploded at the end of their lives. And then they became all of the stuff that we are made of. All of the star, all of the Sun all of the planets, the moons, earth, us, we have that star stuff within us. And I wanted to honor that concept because as a science nerd, it really appeals to me to do something like that. So I created Hyperion, who is named after the father of the Greek god Helios, the god of the sun. And I thought it fit. It's not He's not obviously the god Hyperion from the Greek pantheon, but I think the name fits him. I made this collage a couple days ago, actually, um, with some of his titles, and I had a older picture of him from, like, some art that I found online, but I realized it was copyrighted, and I, I didn't want to, like, share that. I wanted something that I had made myself, so there's that. Down here, I have, it's very similar to the way it was before. I have his candle that I use when I'm praying. I have the prayer beads that I made myself. And uh, I'm really proud of those. I have the book that I have the prayers in because there's a lot of them and sometimes I forget. I don't have them all memorized. I have this ring that was actually my grandfather's ring. He was a mason, and that's one of the masonry rings. But it's it's got stones, little rainbow stones on it. It's got a pinnacle on it, and I thought I would use it for, like, witchy stuff. And I wear that when I'm praying. And I also put this little bottle of rose water. Um, I anoint my 
hands and my neck with rose water once I'm doing my praying. My cauldron is being used as a fireproof dish where I put my used matches and other things that have been burnt. And they just kind of sit there until I need it for another purpose and then I stick them in the trash. I've got this little star, which I love, that I got at the Renaissance Festival. It looks like those uh, Animal Crossing stars. And I think that's really neat, even though I got it like a million years ago. And I also have this quartz moon that I got from Beckethist. I have this amethyst that I got from Michaels. It's a really nice amethyst. And just recently I got this purple sheen labradorite. Let's see if I can get it to do it. Purple flash. Oh, it's not going to do it. Anyway, it's very pretty when it does. When it does, it's very nice. So there's that. And in here, I used to have this stuff like around the candle. But I found this little dish that I've had for a while. And I thought I would put all the things that I associate with him in here. There's some new little stars that I got a little while ago. That There's a little appetite heart. And I decided I'd put them all in here as just kind of a trinkets box to not really be an offering, but just, just looking cool. You know, some things on your altar just need to look cool. And then I have this coin that I got in the Cosma Visions Oracle. I did an unboxing of that. It's the most recent video on my previous old channel that uh, I'll link for you guys in the description. I hope you like it. It's it's pretty concise and oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Everything in that box is so pretty. In the middle here, well actually, no, let's go to the manifestation box. Last time I had a card from the Numinous Tarot on it and it was a different manifestation because this was before COVID. So what I got in here right now is just a protection manifesting health and healing for Gina and I so that we don't get COVID and if we do get COVID we don't get super sick and then this card is kind of helping that with it being the wish card the nine of cups and they go together and I find that if I adjust something in the manifestation box it like disrupts what's going on and something bad could happen because I have like opened the manifestation box to add things to it before for previous manifestations and it didn't work out very well so I am just this has been there for like a year almost a year I'm just gonna leave it there it's just gonna keep doing its job until at least until we get the vaccine in the middle we've got my two big candles that I really just light because I like the, I like the ambiance. I like the symmetry. I love the cups that I got at Goodwill a long time ago. I think they go well with the whole Cosmic Witch dealio. Oh, and I didn't mention that uh, I have a fluorite mushroom that I use to manifest masculine energy and masculine vibes for myself and like help me pass and stuff like that because it's a mushroom and it looks a little phallic. And it just, it's so pretty, I saw it, and I had to have it, because I am still a compulsive spender. It's still a thing. I have this pyramid back here that I use to hold up tarot cards when I'm doing a spell. And I actually got it as a gift after we sent my dad to get cremated. And they sent us a little plaque, not a plaque, but like a little certificate that says that he's, you know, in a garden. He's, he's in a flower garden. That's where his ashes were spread. And then they sent us this little glass pyramid with a little quote on the bottom. And I use it to hold up tarot cards. Here we've got my candle that represents my will. It is not really a working candle. It's more like when I light the candle... It's usually during a spell and it represents my will 
to complete the spell. And I don't know, it works for me. Over here, I've got stuff from my parents. I know I went over this in the last video on my other channel. That uh, the swan represents my mom because she's always liked swans. And the turtle represents my dad because he, he liked turtles and turtles are green and green is my dad's favorite color. So I now have two pink calcites, one for each of them. You really can't see the pink, but they are pink. I've, oop, I've got a green adventuring heart because adventuring is, well, green is my dad's favorite color. And I've got this quartz crystal that I got from the dirt outside mom's hospice that I associate with her energy. I'll get to these candles at the end, but uh, as for the front here, well, here's my wand. It's very pretty. Um, and this, this plate I got at Bookman's, it's got some wax on it, but I try to like align it with the current, the current sign. Not that it really does anything, but I find it interesting. It's, it's a great find. I really like it. There's this band-aid that holds my fibromyalgia pain relief stones. We have tourmalinated quartz. We have black tourmaline and rhodonite. And I've all charged those for the intention of pain relief and comfort and joint pain relief. You know, fibromyalgia stuff. Um, on the opposite side, I have a spoon for, because I'm a spoony. If you look up the spoon theory of pain, it'll explain that. But I always need more spoons, so this spoon is manifesting more spoons. I've got... The Lepidolite crystal for my bipolar disorder, which I've actually been doing pretty good with. I am, I'm depressed at the moment, but it's not the worst depression I've ever been in. And I'm, I'm able to be functional. I'm just <laughs> sad a lot, you know, depression be like, and here is some more fluorite. I love fluorite as you can tell. And as I've stated before. And it's, it's for mental health. I'm using it for mental health because I hear that pyramids are a really good shape to manifest things into the universe, like upwards and into the universe. And so I'm, I say manifest a lot in this video, but it's kind of what I'm doing. It's making things happen for me. And so I've got this for general mental health and just sending out good healing mental health vibes in the universe because fluorite is my favorite stone and I associate it with me and like people have tarot significators I feel like fluorite is my crystal significator if that makes sense we've got some prayer beads that go with the archetypes that I want to talk about in just a second I made these back when I made these but I didn't have a use for them. I mean, I I realized I didn't need them at the time. So now, they're just they're just my favorite color. There's no like color significance. They're just my favorite like mint green color, which it's more mint in person than it is on film. But uh, yeah, those are those. And over here, this is the newest addition to my altar, along with the prayer beads that uh, I am working with archetypes. And I don't know if these archetypes count as like, I know they're not Jungian archetypes and I don't even know if they count as literary archetypes, but I consider them archetypes because they are a kind of character. They are a kind of relationship dynamic that is not just individual characters, but is something that you see a lot of in fiction. And I figure, what else would you call that? That would be an archetype. So what I'm working with is the concept of the lover and the beloved. The, the lover is the one who protects, who makes the beloved feel safe and loved, while the beloved is someone who goes through a lot of mental or physical trauma 
and feels unworthy and feels unloved and the lover makes them realize that they are worthy of love and that they they're worth something and that's basically my favorite dynamic in everything that I've ever read and watched and it's my favorite ship dynamic and I wanted to honor that I was doing it fandom to fandom like, I don't know if you guys remember my first altar tour when I was working from character with characters from Pacific Rim. And it was basically this same archetypes. It was, it was the same concept. I just, instead of going from fandom to fandom every time I switch a fandom, I decided I would honor the basic concept of what I liked in those characters. So <clears throat> we had the lover on this side and the beloved on the other side. And right now they are being represented with characters from the Untamed slash uh, Modazushi. Right now we have Wei Wushan and Lang Wenji. They are canonically together and I'm really inspired by their relationship because I have been through a lot of mental anguish and mental trauma and gone through things that have given me PTSD and I really relate to Wei Ying and I want someone to love me the way that Lang Zhan loves him. And I think I can I think I can have that. I think one day I will have that. But right now, I am lonely. I am very lonely. And I don't want to get into it because that's a whole other video. Probably a trans video. But I need some love in my life. I need to feel loved and be loved. And I figured if I can't go out right now and find a boyfriend because, you know, it's, it's COVID, it's a pandemic, I am not going into a bar. Are you kidding me? You could not pay me right now. So if I can't actually go out and pursue love, at least I can invite love into my life. And right now, these two are helping me realize that I can be loved, that I am worthy of love and are helping me with my own self-love and loving myself, not just finding love from others, is loving myself as well. So I think it's going to be really beneficial. I'm enjoying it so far. I've got Garnet for Wei Ying and Selenite for Lan Zhan. I've got Rose Quartz back here, just to represent love in general. And here, I want to put something like some sort of offering, but I haven't decided what it's going to be yet. I'm sorry if this is shaky. I'm holding it with like my pop socket. So I think I'm going to split this video into two parts. Uh, do the rest of my witchy room as a second part, but let me go through the drawers. I, I went through this before, but it's kind of changed. Hot plate, we've got candles in there, more candles, more candles, more candles, 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 uh, tiny jars, my bell, some lavender, some things that used to be on my altar. I got myself a candle snuffer, which I really needed. I got bay leaves, some scissors, my book of shadows. I don't really have uh, tarot cards in here anymore. They are in their own place. I've got, these are where all my crystals are. Then I've just got some other supplies back there. And in here, we've got more candles. This is mostly seasonal stuff. Some skull jars, some heart jars, candles, bigger jars. And little bags, organza bags, because you gotta have those. Some sea salt. And just things that I'm not using at the moment that I use less often than the stuff at the top. So I think one other thing is. Where'd they go? Here we go. Here's my spices. I finally got them out. They are labeled. I've had these for a while. 
they are labeled they've hardly been opened I hope they're still good I wouldn't cook with them but I would definitely still use them in spells and stuff yeah that's gonna be it for this video and then I'll go through the rest of my witchy stuff later so thank you for watching this and I'll see you guys next time bye bye all right guys this is what my altar looks like all lit up at night this is the first time I've had everything including these two candles lit up at the same time I think it looks pretty nice don't you think I got those those vine lights on Wish. I like them a lot. Anyway, thanks for watching. Talk to you guys later. Bye.